Hi, this is Gary Fong. Today I'm going to talk about the new Canon 600 EXRT Flash. It actually works in three different modes. The first mode is, as pictured here, on camera flash, regular TTL flash, and then it also works as a master controller with a radio. And it also works as a slave with the radio, but it also works as a master controller with an optical system like infrared. So for example, you could use the 600 EXRT on the hot shoe like this as a master controller to uh, operate 580 EX2, 430 EX2s as slaves. Or you can use this with a couple of other 600 EXRTs, one or two or more, and use those as slave units. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to teach you how to work the controls on the 600 EXRT to put it through the different uh, modes and also some really important operational features about how to use the 600 EXRT. Okay, so this is your 600 EXRT and um, let's just go ahead and turn it on. And when it's on, this is the regular mode. This is the on-camera flash mode. And there's a few things that I wanted to point out. Um, first of all, uh, it's ETTL. And ETTL is exactly what you want when you're on camera because the system is very, very accurate. It basically emits a flash until it has enough exposure uh, through the sensor for whatever metering system you've used, and then it turns it off. And so let me just show you this light right here is an important light. This is the TTL verification light. And what happens is, is when it gets a proper exposure, that light goes green. That's all you need to know. Sometimes people go, oh, I don't know why my pictures are too dark, and they do something like this. They'll manually override the plus and minus, which is a big no-no. Let me just show you what, uh, how to do that. So you see right there it's zero, smack in the center. You can take that wheel and then if you think it's too bright, <coughs> go down, or if you think it's too um, dark, go up. But you really don't want to do that because this is an intentional overexposure or underexposure. Trust the TTL system because it's, it works really great. Uh, a lot of times, of course, it might be contrast or something like that, but the exposure is fine. So if you're shooting group photographs, uh, you're at a church or something like that, and you don't know if you have enough exposure on the people, look for that green light. If the green light doesn't go off, then you need to change your ISO or your aperture. Not the shutter speed, the ISO or the aperture. Okay, so that is uh, that uh, the plus minus. Now let's talk about the zoom real quick. See this right here? What's kind of cool about the 600 EXRT is that it has a much uh, broader zoom range than the previous 580 EX2. This one will go from 24 millimeters to 200 and the previous model did uh, 28 to 135. And so if you were shooting a 24 millimeter you'd have quite a bit of vignetting. Also you can go into a manual uh, zoom right here and literally click it down to 20 which is kind of neat. But um, and then you can manually go up. Now, why would I want to take it up to 200? Um, if you want to, honestly, I don't. I can't think of a scenario unless maybe you want to have a bright hot spot right in the center of a photo and super contrasty lighting or something like that. I don't know. But let's just go ahead and keep turning to the left, and then it'll go back to A. So when I turn it to the right, you see how it goes to M, and I've overridden it. So uh, if I had a 35 millimeter lens and I stuck it on there, then it would. Uh, fill the 35 millimeter lens, but of course it would do the same thing on A. So it says 24 millimeters on it because there's a 24 to 105 uh, lens on it right now. Watch what happens when I zoom. I'll zoom it out to 105, focus it, and it goes boom right to 105, and then back it up just a little bit, and it will take me to 50. So uh, that's what the zoom function is. Now, when you pop the flash straight up, uh, let me just show you. Yeah, when you take the flash and move it straight up, what happens is, is the zoom disables. And that's because it doesn't make any sense to try to figure out what focal length your zoom is because uh, it's basically not pointed forward. So zoom does not apply in a situation like that. Cool function on this one is the single button that does the high speed sync. So this is regular sync on, on most of the cameras. It'll go up to 1250 one two fiftieth of a second. But if you want to go high speed sync, you just press that button and it'll give you a lightning bolt and an H. High speed sync will take you up to 4,000, 8,000 on some of the camera models. But 
during that exposure, the it's kind of a long story, but the uh, the flash is emitting during the entire time that the shutter's open, and that takes a lot more power, and so the recycle time is quite large, and on something like that, you don't really want to go in a high-speed sink unless you have like a uh, our power snoot snoot modifier, or if you're really close to your subject, because it'll it'll go out. Now you can leave that on, and when you're just you know shooting regularly, like in low light, then you could just leave it on, and it'll it'll sink on its own, uh, say to two fiftieth of a second. Okay, so that's that. Um, oh, this one right here, this is fo focus, uh, sorry, flash ex exposure bracketing. Uh, not often used, but if you think that you don't know, uh, or you don't, uh, you don't really want to kind of fix too much in post, you would just want to have like a bracketing between underexposure and overexposure, then you can hit that, and then this thing will actually allow you to control if you want to be one stop, one third stop, uh, one half stop plus or minus in that sequence of rapid shots that it'll do to do your uh, flash, ex flash exposure bracketing. This right here is the mode button and what's really kind of cool about the 600 EXRT is that it just has a single mode button but the color of the screen changes and I think that's really cool because when you're on just regular TTL it goes to green and then when you go to the radio, now this is radio up here, radio transmitter and you see it says the word master. When it's a master it goes green. When it's a slave it goes amber. So you'll know when it's a um, slave or a master just literally by looking at them if you, you point these controllers all back toward you. This again is a radio transmitter and so therefore you don't need to have line of sight between those red panels. Now this is also a hybrid system where this can be a controller not just for radio but it can go and control your infrared optical system and you do that by hitting the zoom button again or this flash button again and you'll see this turns into a lightning bolt this lightning bolt will now be a master you see it where it says master now uh, to your 580 EX2 older generation or 430 EX2's and this will be just like a regular uh, very very expensive uh, STE2 transmitter is basically what it does now right over here on the left, it's very hard to see. So, uh, zooming in right here, you can see this little uh, spark, and under master, that means that this flash will actually be on and figure into the exposure. Now, typically, that's not what we want to do in um, off-camera flash, because why would we want it on anyway uh, if, if what we want to do is have off-camera flash modeling and things like that. So, in order to disactivate that, this is menu one. I'm going to hit menu again and then right here you see that there's a spark or no spark. You want to click it over one so that the sparks go off. Now that means that this flash is not going to figure into the exposure. Uh, it, it's basically going to be disactivated and turn into a, a controller without any exposure. And uh, if I want to go to radio and do the same function I just press this button until it goes to radio master and then you, you'll see that the spark is turned off. Now this is very very important control. What's nice about the 600 EX R, uh, RT is that there's a menu thing and it's hierarchical 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 yeah anyway it has a hierarchy so it has sub menus okay so that's menu 2 now, under this, you can hit the ratio button, and that's kind of cool. This one right here says the ratio is off, which means that all of the flashes that are under this exposure group, and this is all, so that's just basically all of the flashes that are controlled by radio, will be ETTL. Let's hit it again, ratio, and then this says A to B. So that means when I turn this into a slave, as I'll do in the next part of this video, I can either call it an A slave or a B slave, and that way I'll know if I want to change the ratio. So for example, the, when the flash on the left is your main light, and maybe you want to have that at regular TTL, but the flash on the right 
is going to color a wall and you want to have that maybe minus two or minus three stops so that you can have really intense color then you would go to the ratio button and then you would go ahead and change the ratio to this. So in order to change the exposure of the B group I would just basically go to menu 2 hit the group button that'll activate the A and B kind of thing and then I'll hit the center button select and you'll see right now that I can move this dial up and down. Now actually the dial moves and the little pointer stays the same but it's still the same thing. In this situation where I've got a colored wall I want the colored wall to be about three times not uh, underexposed compared to A. So what you're seeing here is you're seeing B is one-third and A is regular TTL. What it basically means is it's going to do a full TTL but the camera in exposure group B will spit out just one-third of the power of A and that's basically how the ratio works. If I hit ratio again I can bring in a C group and I can modify uh, what it would be on a third exposure group so that's kind of interesting and then if I hit the the mode button again and you'll see this is group A, group B, group C so now we've added A, B and C we've got a nice little grid here that allows to change the ratios for A, B and C and you know in, in a situation like that you could actually just put a big sticker on uh, your B, C and A, a flashes so that you can play with the ratios now a lot of times people ask me well can I change the power on the slave unit uh, where it is and the answer is no and that's there's a good reason for that because you don't want to walk back and forth to each of the slaves and adjust them uh, you want to stand at your camera and play with the ratios here and that's where you start to get a real good taste of uh, what the photo is going to look like so let's go ahead and exit out of here I'm going to press the mode button and it'll take us back to ETTL again we're at the lightning bolt I'm going to put you on the battery Okay, this is your regular ETTL, and I'm going to put you on the radio, and this is Radio Master. Okay, so here is your 600EX. Right now, it is just in your regular TTL mode. I'm going to turn it into a slave, and I'm going to turn it into a slave as a member of Exposure Group A, and I'll show you how quick and easy that's done with these menus. So we're just going to basically go right here to this little uh, left button right there, and you'll notice, by the way, that whenever I have a radio, it'll say link. So that means that it, um, it's basically doing master, controller, slave. It's, it's doing the wireless option. So right here you see it says master. So to turn it into a slave, I click it one more time. You'll notice the color of this thing completely changed. And why is the link not on? Because we're on lightning bolt mode. So I'm going to hit it again. And I'm going to go to radio slave links on so now whenever you have radio this lights gonna go on so now I'm a member of exposure group B and remember in the last uh, section I said well if I want to have exposure group B be three stops under uh, I can I can control that there now uh, if I want to go and turn it into exposure group A just hit the group button again and then it'll go up to A What's neat about the 600 uh, EX system is there's actually five exposure groups. Now, five exposure groups mean that you can have flashes all at different ratios, which is probably more than anyone would ever imagine. But that doesn't mean that you only are limited to five flashes. You can have a whole bunch of flashes on exposure group A, on exposure group B, on exposure group C, uh, or D, or E. So that's basically how that goes. Now, to ch change the channel, and what I mean by changing the channel is basically it's a frequency that's locked to the other uh, slave units or master units and the only reason why you'd ever really want to change the channel is honestly because if there's another person that has a 600 EXRT and they're on your channel 8 they literally will trip your flash so uh, say for example you've got a situation like that we hit the menu button menu 2 and menu 3 and you'll see channel right there Okay, and so I can just say, hey buddy, you're tripping my flash. What channel are you on? I'm on 8. Okay, I'm going down to 7. Roger that, 10-4. Okay, so now we're on channel 7, and everybody can talk. Now, if your flashes don't hook up together, you might be on the wrong channel. So that's another thing about the master-slave situation uh, on, on this. 
Now on the subject of radios, you can choose whatever frequency you want, but this is kind of a neat feature. It's called scan, so we'll go to the menu button, go 2, 3, and see the scan button. When you go like that, it'll show you the strength of the signals for the different channels, and it will actually help you pick one, but right now it's spinning like that because... Oh, okay, so there you go. So look at these different uh, radio strengths. I don't want to choose channel 4 because I've only got two bars. This is just kind of like a cell, and this basically happens when there's radio interference. Um, so if there's radio interference, of course, this, this takes this down. So the one with the highest would be channel 9. And so I can just literally go right here and pick channel 9 and with the strongest, or also again down here where I have 13, 14, and 15. Uh, I can just pick 13, and then now I'm on channel 13, which is the strongest radio. And uh, so that's basically that, that, how that works, and that's the uh, entire functionality of the 600D XRT, or at least anything you'd ever want to do with it, which is, uh, this, this covers the universe of the entire world. Okay, thanks for watching.